I got you. You're so dead. No fair, Tommy. We're not allowed to climb on trees. Mom said it's dangerous. Oh, wah. Do you see your mommy here? You're such a baby. I'm not a baby. I'm six years old. Wah, baby. You're six, too. Uh, six and a half? You don't even know what danger means, baby. Okay, now you be the cop and try to catch me. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here I come, criminals. Tommy, where'd you go? Did you go inside again? No fair. Tommy, where are you? We're not supposed to be back here. Yeah, says who? Um, the sign? I didn't even see it, though. <clears throat> Danger. Keep out. What is that? Some kind of monster? I don't know. It's your house. <laughs> Let's check it out. We're not supposed to. <laughs> Says who? The sign? It's like a million years old. It's probably junk. We're not allowed. Hey, you're supposed to be the cop. It's your job to make people follow the rules. I'm the robber. I don't obey the law. So I got to do it or else I'm not playing the game fair. Tommy, stop. It's not funny. Tommy, I'm serious. I'm going to arrest you for real. <laughs> you wish, baby. Baby! <laughs> You're in so much trouble! <sighs> Whoa. What is that? I don't know. It doesn't look safe. How deep do you think it goes? I don't know. Do you think the monster from the sign lives down there? Can we go back and get popsicles now? Ugh. You're always such a scaredy cat. I am not. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Curiosity killed the cat, you know. So are you a cat? Mm. Fine. Whoa! <sighs> Stay there. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. Bruce! Bruce! Dad! 
I'm here. You're all right. I've got you. Are you hurt? Bats. You saw bats? Mm -hmm. Well, we are in their house. I'm scared. No, no. It's okay. They're more scared of you than you are of them. Imagine how scared you'd be if a giant bat fell in through the roof of your room when you're trying to sleep. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. That's my son. Now hold on tight. Mr. Wayne! I told you to wait behind the fence. Sorry. Is Bruce okay? He's fine, Tommy. Thank you for letting me know. I think you should go home now. Shh. You're all right, Bruce. Hush. Last one. Ready? Mm-hmm. Count of three. One, two, three. There we go, my brave boy. You did so well, didn't even cry. Well, not by the time you got to him. Always looking tough for the ladies, huh, champ? Don't tell him that. You can cry if you need to, Bruce. There's no shame in it. I'm okay. You are now, but next time you may not be so lucky. You know you're not supposed to be back there. I'm sorry. Go easy on him, Thomas. He's been punished enough. What a terrible scare. How do you think I feel? You're right. We've all had a frightening day. How about popsicles all around, hmm? Yes, please. Do you hear that? Such a gentleman. Doesn't even forget his manners after a crisis. Don't tell your mother about the bats. She almost had a heart attack about the fall alone. I don't need her losing sleep over the possibility of rabies. We'll go get you vaccinated in a bit here, once you're all settled. Shots! Shh! Here we go. Orange for Dad, berry for Mom, and cherry for my little hero. Mom! You're welcome. Ah, good evening, Mr. Pennyworth. Oh, have we met? No, sir. Mr. Wayne has been expecting you. May I take your bag? I've got it. Thank you. Alfred! Alfred, I can't believe it. You actually came. Stanley, why don't you take his bag to the guest quarters? Uh, the one overlooking the gardens. Right away, Master Wayne. I guess medical tech is big business. Hmm. Uh, quite the place you've built here, Thomas. <laughs> you give me too much credit. Old family heirloom. My great-grandfather built it. I could only hope to be half the man he was. Come in. Let me introduce you to the missus. I've read up on your opponent. Sounds like a questionable character. The incumbent, yes. He's busted the unions and controls half the judges in City Hall. But he's not good for Gotham. And I see you're celebrating. A little prematurely. The election isn't for a few days yet. The polls say we're a lock. Ah, yes, a lock. Mm. Uh, what is it they say about pride coming before the fall? Hmm? I wouldn't drop my guard until the fight's over, Thomas. 
The fight is never truly over. I'm of the philosophy that one should enjoy the moment while we can. After all, once Thomas is elected, that's when the real fight truly begins. Alfred, I'd like you to meet my wife and campaign manager. And advocate for the rights of the mentally ill, Martha Wayne. A pleasure. An honor. After all these years, I finally get to meet the man who saved my husband's life. We owe you so much, Alfred. I may have saved Thomas in Vietnam, but he's the one who saved me once you returned home. They say I never would have walked again if it wasn't for his miraculous work as my surgeon. I owe him my life. This way. Martha, please. Oh, you have to meet Bruce. Bruce? Oh, one moment, excuse me. Bruce? You have a lot to lose, don't you? What? Do you think the death threats are from your political opponents? They're from everywhere. It comes with the territory. Don't be coy with me! You called me here because you wanted someone on security you could trust. That means you're having concerns about the people closest to you. The people who are in this house right now. It's our friends, the Elliots. Good people. Their son is friends with our son. You suspect they're behind the threats? Are they here now? No, no. They're in the hospital. Caught in a car wreck just last week. I'm sorry to hear that. And the boy? He wasn't with him, thankfully. Terrible accidents. On the contrary. That's why I called you. It wasn't an accident. Their brakes were cut. The police have no leads. And you think whoever is responsible might be behind the death threats you're getting now? I have no reason to think so. But it didn't sit right with me. Apparently, the Isley family felt the same. As soon as it happened, they sent their daughter Pamela to boarding school just in case. Took a cue from the Cobblepots who shipped their boy Oswald off to Europe every year. They're taking precautions, as should you. Come on, Dad! Bruce! No running! Well, we're gonna be late! Bruce, your jacket! I'm sorry, late? I promised Bruce we'd take him to a movie. He's been dying to see it. What are you doing? You shouldn't be going out right now. We go out every Sunday as a family. That's not going to change, especially now. Between the hospital and the campaign, he hasn't seen as much of us, and I want to make it up to him. You don't have a choice. Yes, I do. Fine, I'll come with you. After the election, Alfred. I appreciate the concern, but my family comes first. I want Bruce to have a normal life. You call this normal? Living in a gilded palace with butlers, maids, and cooks? You don't know what normal is, Thomas. You never have. Life's ugly outside of your little garden of Eden. I know how ugly life can be. Or have you forgotten? You were a surgeon, not a soldier. I was both. <coughs> They're waiting for me. Please, make yourself at home. Uh, damn it. Hold on. Here. Go pick out some snacks. Okay. Oh, goodness, a bundle of energy, as always. Hmm. Welcome to the Monarch Theater. Don't stand in the aisle, darling. You'll block others. Sorry. Can we sit in the first row? It's a little close. Please, 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 please. I'll let him, it'll be fun! <laughs> yes! Now sit back and enjoy the show at the finest cinema in Gotham.
Basil Carlo is in this. He's a real actor. As opposed to? I'm just surprised. Didn't expect to see him in a kid's action flick. What is justice? There are those that believe it to be the rule of law. Others contend that there can be no justice without freedom, including from the tyranny of law. I've even heard it said, the true nature of justice is unknowable by man in all his flaws and limitations. We are each our own island. What is justice to one is injustice to another. Perhaps it doesn't exist at all. Nothing but a fantasy invented by man to comfort themselves against the chaos of a cold, unfeeling universe. As for me, I believe justice is real, though intangible. It's all around us, but fleeting, lest we pursue it and fight to preserve it. Not unlike a phantom. I am that phantom. A specter not of light nor of shadow, but something in between. A gray ghost. <laughs> you look a fright, old boy. Let's see if we can look more presentable so we don't embarrass Thomas again. I'm sorry, folks. The power's out. Can everyone please exit this way? The theater is offering full refunds for everyone. Thomas? It's okay. Let's just get back to the car, Martha. Maybe they'll fix it. Come on, Bruce. You can exit through the front here, Mr. and Mrs. Wayne. Thank you, but we're all right exiting with everyone else. There's another theater by the mall. Maybe we can still see it. We'll come back next weekend, sweetheart. I want to see it tonight! Hey, watch where you're going, kid! Who's gonna make me? My parents are the richest people in Gotham. You're the Wayne kid. Bruce! Uh, Dad? Shut up. No, please. Don't hurt him. We'll give you whatever you want. Here. Let me see your hands. Back up! Please. You don't have to do this. We can help you. The pearls too. Toss them over. I said now. I'm trying. <laughs> ah, hell.
phone for you, sir. Thank you. I'll take it in here. Hello, this is Alfred Pennyworth. What? I'm I'm on the way. Christ. <laughs> Can you believe it? A billion dollars. And that's just cash. He's got assets. He's got Wayne Enterprises. The kid's set for life. Sign me up. All my old man ever gave me was a whooping. <laughs> <laughs> The hell is wrong with you? He's a child that just watched his parents get stolen from him in cold blood. You want to shut your mouths and go find your human decency before I report you? Oh, God. Sorry, Jim. We were just having some fun. We didn't mean nothing by it. Hey there, son. What's your name? Yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, dumb question. You're Bruce Wayne. Everyone knows that. You look cold. Here. Can I uh, get you anything? Juice? Cocoa? I know. I'm sorry, kid. Look, you see this badge here? I'm a police detective. You know what that means. I may not be able to bring your parents back, but I can find the scumbag that's responsible. I won't rest until I do. I promise you. Okay? <laughs> there, there now, son. It's gonna be okay. Captain Barnes? This is Alfred Pennyworth. I know there were death threats made. I want a list. We know. We checked your background. U.S. Army, the Royal Marines, MI6, and the security firm you worked for in Seoul, Korea. Quite an accomplished life you've led. But obviously, we're handling this investigation. I, I, I don't understand. Why call me in if you don't want my help? We need to talk to you about something else. And who the devil are you? Mr. Pennyworth, this is Grace Gordon, social worker. And what business does a social worker have with me? Did you know the Waynes named you their son's legal guardian in the event anything happened to them? Legal guardian? What? I'm not a parent. I don't know anything about children. I just want to know who killed Thomas and Martha. Leave that to the police, Pennyworth. That's our job. And my job is to sort out what happens to this poor boy. He won't talk to anyone. He hasn't eaten anything. Where is he now? With my husband. He's the detective there. There has to be someone else who can watch over him. Thomas and Martha Wayne were the last of their respective families. There is no one else. What happens if I say no? He goes to child services and into foster care. I work for the system, Mr. Pennyworth. I know it well. If it were up to me, I would never send another child into that meat grinder again. Especially not one who has suffered the trauma he just suffered. Hey, I heard about what happened on the news. How totally awful. Thank you for staying late on such short notice, Alicia. Of course. Little Jamie was no trouble at all. Slept like a baby. Well, at least someone's getting some sleep tonight. Mr. Gordon, you're soaking wet. You lose your coat or something? Huh? Oh, don't worry about it. You head on home safely, okay? Will do. 
Have a good night. <laughs> what did happen to your coat? I gave it to the Wayne kid. God knows I wouldn't want my son out in the cold. Listen, Bruce, you have to eat something. Who the hell are you? I'm... <clears throat> I'm your butler. You already have a butler. Stanley. Stanley was employed by your parents. He and the rest of the staff have already taken their severance and left. Then why are you still here? Because, as I said, I am your butler. Your parents tasked me with serving you. I don't wish to disappoint them, so if you'll be so kind, Bruce... Don't you mean Master Bruce? <clears throat> Forgive me, you're right. So if you'll be so kind, Master Bruce... Kindly eat something so I may continue to serve you. As they wanted me to. I can't eat this. I feel sick. Understandable. I can hardly blame you. Is there anything you think you could eat? Can I... have a popsicle? Uh, it looks like there's... Um, Two left, uh, one orange and one berry. Uh, which would you like? Can't I have both? Just this once. Uh, come now, let's let's get you cleaned up. There we are. Try to get some rest. Don't leave. I'm scared. As you wish, Master Bruce. I'm at your disposal. I can't sleep. Um, I suppose children like bedtime stories, correct? I don't think any of my stories are age appropriate, unfortunately. I like the grey ghost. Ah, the superhero. I used to read his comic books when I was younger, actually. Uh, I think I can remember a story or two of his. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, <clears throat> he is a specter of neither light nor darkness. Rather, he inhabits the penumbra, the space in between. He is the grey ghost. He is not afraid. And neither should you be. <laughs> 